Our challenge as people of faith is to synchronize our faith with God's schedule. It would not be a challenge if God would mark harvest season on your schedule. It would not be a challenge. It wouldn't be a challenge because you could keep yourself occupied until that point. Don't even worry about it. You'll be married by 27. Well, then I'm good. I'll just enjoy myself till 27. We could be ready with the sickle if you would let us see the schedule. I could be ready with the sickle if you would synchronize. So, so let me ask you a question. How do you relate to a God in patience who won't show you the schedule he's working off of? Because this scripture says that the man scatters the seed on the ground and the seed sprouts and grows. But watch this. The real test of the seed is can it survive the soil? So he says that the seed is scattered, and you can see that, right? You can see the beginning of the thing. It might not be easy. I got a long way to go, and my muscles might be sore at the end of the day from the sowing process, but at least I can see that the ground is being broken up. I can see it. I can see it. And well, the harvest season is a season of joy because I'm going to be eating from the field that I'm working in real soon. But he says that the, the seed sprouts and grows because of the work of the soil. I think that's where most dreams die in the soil. I think that's where most marriages fail in the soil. I think that's where most good intentions give way to apathy in the soil. I think it's somewhere between changing diapers and sending them off to college that most parents wonder, did anything that I taught you take root in your heart? Hello? I, I mean, it's one thing to be the farmer in this passage. He had to sow the seed, and he had to reap the seed. But what about the times where you're not the farmer, but you're the seed? Can I preach this like God gave it to me? I hope you'll understand that sometimes you're going to feel like that seed that goes down into the soil. And the soil is a very strange place to be because when the seed is in the soil, it cannot see the intention of the one who sowed it. When the seed is in the soil, there, there are times where it feels like it's not going to get enough oxygen or water to make it. I know that I'm personifying an inanimate object, but you know, your life is a seed. Your dream is a seed. Your vision is a seed. Your purpose is a seed. It seems insignificant, and it takes a lot of faith to see the purpose in what seems insignificant. But you know what takes even more faith? To believe that the purpose is still working when the process is invisible. In the soil stage, yes, it takes faith to sow, and yes, it takes faith to reap. But what takes the most faith is to be buried in the soil of uncertainty and keep growing. But that's exactly what you've got to do. The kingdom of heaven is like a seed. The man scattered it, and it went in the soil, and it stayed 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 in the soil. And it stayed in the soil. Every stage of faith I find myself to be pretty, pretty proficient in at this point in walking with God. I don't mind sowing. I don't mind working. I don't mind writing a song. I don't mind writing a sermon. I don't mind ministering to somebody. I don't mind sowing. I certainly don't mind reaping. I don't mind reaping a bit. Problem is, I don't know what tool to use in the soil stage. Talk to me. Talk to me. When I'm sowing, I need belief that it can become something. When I'm reaping, I need the strength to go out and act on what I've initiated. There are some stages of faith where there's not a thing you can do. It just takes time. I'm believing for something I can't see anymore. 
Sowing a seed means releasing it. That means you, you've got to let it go for a while. You've got to just step back, and the seed is in the soil to die. So the farmer's telling you, yeah, man, I scattered the seed, and I woke up, and I saw the ear, and I saw the head, and I took my sickle, and I had a sandwich. It was the most amazing thing. The seed is going, can I speak? I went down in that soil, and I was down in that soil so long, I thought I was about to die in the soil. I was gasping for breath in the soil. I didn't know if I had been forgotten. I felt like the farmer didn't love me anymore. I didn't even know what I was going through. Then all of a sudden, I started to change shapes, and everything was unfamiliar, but I was still down in the soil, didn't even know if anybody remembered they had put me there. Can I hear somebody shout? Because you know what it feels like to be a seed. Who am I preaching to? I know this message is personal for somebody. And, and the seed is, is in, in the ground, but the scripture says, don't get it twisted, the seed is still on schedule. This is where I want to encourage you. If you feel like a seed that is in the ground of uncertainty, the ground of disappointment, the ground of doubt, I know God's going to fill in the blank for what you need because you know what your seed is. And if I asked you, you wouldn't say the real thing that's working in your life. You would say the churchily acceptable thing, the spiritually acceptable thing. You wouldn't talk about the real dirt that your life is in. You wouldn't talk about the real process that you're trapped in. You wouldn't talk about the real thought pattern. So you just substitute whatever you need for seed, okay? And God knows what it is, and you know what it is, and I want to preach about that seed because one thing I found out about the seed is that the seed is protected. I need you to know when you're in a soil season in your life, in a season where you can't see anything happening. See, God knew that the seed would need to survive a period of vulnerability. So every seed is wrapped in a hard protective coating. The seed is wrapped in a hard protective of coding so that until it produces what it's meant to produce, nothing's going to be able to get what's inside of the seed. I see Moses in a basket trying to kill off all the Hebrew children, but until the seed was ready to be released, the seed was in a basket floating down a river to protect it. I need you to know that I'm protected. I need you to know that God has covered me. I need you to know that God has wrapped me up. I need you to know that God didn't just put purpose inside of me. He put protection all around me. And until it comes to pass, I need you to know I'm protected. The devil can try to snatch me up, but I'm protected. The rain can fall really hard, or I can go through a dry season, but I'm protected. I'm coated. I got something on the outside protecting what's on the inside. God's got me covered. And it shall come forth because I'm protected. I'm protected. God said to tell somebody, your child is protected. You're praying about them. But while you're praying about them, you need to know that God already wrapped them. There are some things in life you can't do for your child. But how many are grateful when the seed leaves your hands? It never leaves God's eye. His eye is on the sparrow, and he's got your babies. It's protected. And the seed is in a stage right now where it doesn't have the roots to be able to get the nutrients from the soil. And it doesn't have the ability through photosynthesis. You would think I was an agricultural, horticultural expert preaching this sermon. I got excited about the seed, and I discovered that the seed has its own food supply until the time that it is able to derive the nutrients from another source. What am I trying to say? The seed has not only protection, but the seed has provision. Help Help me preach. Everything I need for life and godliness is inside of me. And what I can't get from others in the soil stage, God will give it to me from the inside. I'll date myself, love myself, help myself, bless myself, encourage myself. The stuff that the seed needs is already in the seed. So don't even worry about it because it's protected. Protection and provision. If you're looking at somebody who's shouting right now and you don't understand their enthusiasm, the reason they're shouting is they've got some stuff in the ground. They've got some dreams in the ground. They've got some potential in the ground. And when it rains, 
Farmers don't get annoyed. When it rains, everybody who has something in the ground reaches up to receive. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain in the house today. Come on, you better stretch and catch this rain. So the, the protection is on the seed. The provision is in the seed. And it's just a matter of time before the potential is released from the seed.